Hey kiddos, we are on chapter 11 in The Doll People. Let's begin, are you ready? Annabelle opened, and oh, and it's called The Attic. Annabelle opened Auntie Sarah's journal and pointed to a page in it. I've read this much, she said to Tiffany, kind of like this, I've read this much, like to this point. That's a lot. Tell me what's happening now. <clears throat> well, this journal started early in 1955. I don't know whether Auntie Sarah kept other journals. I think maybe not. Why do you think so, asked Tiffany. Because at the beginning of this one, she wrote about regular things. You know, what she and our family did every day, what we did at night, what Catherine and her husband were like. Who's Catherine, asked Tiffany. Grandma Catherine. She was very young in 1955 and was about to give birth to Annie, Kate's mother. Oh, okay. So the dollhouse was still in the house, even though grown-ups were living there and probably not playing with it, okay? Oh, okay. Anyway, if Auntie Sarah had been keeping journals for a long time, why would she bother to write about that stuff? She wouldn't really need to. Oh, Annabelle's doing a good job inferring, like thinking, well, she just wouldn't write about regular stuff if this was a journal, if she had been making a journal for years and years, because she would have done that at the beginning. So that's interesting. And you notice how sometimes the people switch talking and it doesn't always say, said Annabelle, said Tiffany. You sort of have to figure it out um, by what they're saying. <clears throat> that's true. And, um, and that is Tiffany talking. That's true right there. And so now Annabelle's going to say, so what I think is that Auntie Sarah had been looking through the books on the shelves, just as I had. And she found this blank book and decided to keep a journal. Since it was new to her, she wrote about general things at first. But after a while, she began to write about other things. Like blending, su suggested Tiffany. Yes, like blending. And about things that interested her. What kinds of things? Well, spiders for one. Really? Spiders? Annabelle nodded. Nature in general, I guess. But how much nature could she find indoors? There wasn't even a cat in the house then. So Auntie Sarah mostly saw spiders and insects, and she seemed to like spiders quite a bit. She studied them and drew them. How did she study them, asked Tiffany. Well, just observed them. And you know what observed means, because we did that with our grass, didn't we? Just to look at it, notice things. She drew pictures of them and wrote all sorts of things about them, like what kind of webs they spun and how big they were and what they ate. You know what I learned? That different spiders spin different kinds of webs. And Auntie Sarah wrote that not all spiders spin webs. Some catch their prey in other ways. I don't know whether Auntie Sarah ever saw any of those spiders though. How would she know about them then? That's what I was wondering. I think maybe she found a magazine or a book about spiders, or maybe she heard a radio program about them. I'll stop for a second. Way back when, 1955, people really didn't have televisions, but they had the radio and they would listen to the news on the radio, um, kind of like a podcast or something like that. And they could listen to even like funny shows on the radio. There's a lot of other spider information in her journal. Things Auntie Sarah wouldn't have been able to learn just by observing spiders. Like what? Like there are around 150,000 species of spiders. Tiffany raised her eyebrows. And all spiders are carnivores, Annabelle continued. Ew, said Tiffany. Spiders are not insects, they're arachnids. Insects have antenna and six legs and spiders have no antenna and eight legs. Also, most spiders have eight eyes. Tiffany edged closer to Annabelle. Show me some of the parts about spiders, she said. Annabelle flipped back through the journal. Here, she said, she's writing about spiders that spin orb webs and spiders that spin tangled webs and spiders that make funnel webs. She even tried to draw pictures of the webs. She took the journal with her, her some, oh, she took the journal with her sometimes when she went exploring. Look, here's one of her drawings, see? She labeled some of the parts of the spider. The caption underneath Auntie Sarah's drawing read, Common Garden Spider. You guys know about captions from your nonfiction books. They describe what's happening in the picture. Garden Spider? How did she know about garden spiders? Asked Tiffany. I don't know. Like I said, maybe she found a magazine or something. What do you guys predict? 
Mm -hmm, me too. I think she went outside, don't you? Okay. And here, I'm going to show it up close for you. Do you see how all the little sketches and drawings and thing, things around the edge? That are, those are samples of what Auntie Sarah drew and wrote in her journal. There you go. Do you remember your aunt talking about spiders? Annabelle shook her head. Well, maybe a few times. What I mostly remember is that she would tell me about explorers and scientists and pioneers and politicians, mostly women, women who made a difference. I bet you remember those things because they interested you more than spiders do. Spiders scare me a little, admitted Annabelle. Maybe that's why your aunt didn't talk to you about spiders. She didn't want to scare you. Maybe, said Annabelle, but I think she just didn't want me to know about her explorations. Annabelle and Tiffany studied the picture of the common garden spider. Then Annabelle turned the page. Here's another drawing, she said. It's of a, Annabelle paused. Look at those long words. It's a Tigeneria dualica, the cobweb spider. Oh, it's huge and hairy, but harmless, added Tiffany, peering at the journal. So it must have said that, that it's a harmless spider. She turned the page. Here's a, a, an araniomorph. Tiffany sounded out the word. Then she peered down at the faded writing on the page. It's a more advanced spider, she read. Look at all the parts, said Annabelle. Patella, Trochanter, Chilicera. I've seen lots of spiders, but I don't think they looked like this. I am hoping that I said some of those words right because they're real science words and I don't know all those science words. Annabelle read from the page opposite the drawing. Arachnids have sense organs that... Do we really have to read all this? Asked Tiffany. This stuff is boring and it's, it isn't going to help us find your aunt. Annabelle frowned. You never know what might be a clue. Let's just skip to the end of the journal and see what's on the last page. Annabelle hesitated. All right, she said at last. Tiffany took the book from Annabelle and opened to the last page. Hey, it's empty. Nothing's written on it. Probably because she disappeared. She didn't get to finish the journal. Here, look. Annabelle turned the pages backwards until she came to one that was half filled. This is the end. Is she still writing about spiders? It says, find a way into the attic. It starts in the middle of a sentence, Annabelle pointed out. She continued reading. Needed time when humans would be away for a while. Over weekend, they were gone for three days. Made two trips to attic. Timed them. Think I can get to attic, explore, and be back in just under three hours. Doesn't allow for much exploration, but it's something. Could even go to attic on a weekday morning if everyone out and if attic door is open. If so, could go to attic several times a week. Annabelle stopped reading. Several times a week, she exclaimed. Heavens, she turned to the back of the diary. Could go for longer periods of time at night. Will attempt next trip tomorrow morning if possible. Good night, dear diary. That's the end of the journal, said Tiffany. That's the end. Well, she must be in the attic end, then. It's simple. Suddenly, Annabelle felt uncomfortable. It seems a little too simple, she said, frowning. What do you mean? Well, Auntie Sarah has been missing for decades, and... All we had to do was find this journal and read the last page and... What? What? asked Tiffany. Annabelle frowned harder than ever. I'm not sure. She turned back several pages of the journal. Then she flipped to the last page again. She squinted at the writing. Tiffany, does this look like exactly the same writing to you? Exactly the same as what? As the writing at the beginning of the journal? Tiffany took the book from Annabelle. She opened it to the first page and studied the writing. Then she turned to the middle and studied the writing there. Then she turned to the last page. Annabelle, it doesn't look the same. But, but how? Tiffany and Annabelle stared at each other. What would that mean? Tiffany, Tiffany finally asked. That it isn't Auntie Sarah's writing? Because people's writing looks a certain way, right? Your mom's writing looks different from your dad's. You could tell the difference. And so if your mom had been writing a journal and then for some reason she stopped and someone else finished it, the writing would look different. So, hmm, I wonder who finished it. What do you think? I don't know yet. 
And if it isn't, and if it isn't, whose is it? Oh, it must be your aunt's writing, said Tiffany after a moment. Her hand was probably getting tired or something. Or maybe it is someone else's writing. Annabelle, are you playing a trick on me? Tiffany pulled away from Annabelle, looking cross. That isn't very nice. I don't like having tricks played on me. No, no, honest, it isn't me. Then who could it be? A shiver ran down Annabelle's spine. I have no idea. Nobody even knows I found the journal. At least I don't think anyone does. Have you kept it hidden? Yes, very well hidden. The whole time? The whole time. I bet Bobby found it. Maybe, but he couldn't have written it. Why not? Have you ever seen Bobby's writing? He only writes with pencil, he presses really hard, and he makes huge letters. Tiffany looked at the writing on the last page of the journal. It was dainty and thin and written in blue ink. I guess it's not Bobby, she said. Let's see where the new writing begins. Annabelle and Tiffany turned to the second, to the last page of the journal. It begins here, said Annabelle, pointing to the bottom of the page. The last sentences in Auntie Sarah's handwriting say, the humans will be waking soon. Time to get ready for another day. Good night, dear diary. And then all that stuff about going to the attic was added. This is so weird, said Tiffany. Spooky, said Annabelle. Well, I don't know whose writing that is, said Tiffany, but I know something else. What, cried Annabelle. Your aunt must be in the attic and someone wants us to look for her there. Once again, Annabelle shivered. Even so, she looked squarely at Tiffany and said, all right.